let me start by introducing our first speaker, which is uh, Dr. Ned Hill. He's a professor of economic development in the Ohio State University's John Glenn College of Public Affairs. He is also a senior research associate of the College of Engineering's Ohio Manufacturing Institute. His current research focuses on the impact of digital manufacturing on corporate investment and workforce strategies. In addition, he continues research on regional economic resilience and economic development. And before coming to Ohio State University in 2015, Dr. Hill was a faculty member at the Maxine Goldman Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University for over 30 years. He was Dean of the Levin College from 2007 until 2015. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Hill earned his PhD in urban and regional planning and economics from MIT in 1981. So without any further ado, Ned, I will turn it over to you. Well, I thank you, Mark, and good morning, everybody. Um, and I also appreciate the support that Karen and Emma are giving us today. Um, now, just as, before I start, start my presentation, warning, there's 28 slides, so you can look at the bottom right-hand corner and see how much longer I'll be droning on for you. Uh, but, you know, it, like the title of this presentation is Digital Dreams versus Digital Reality. Um, I, I, I almost called it lies, damn lies, and consultants, but then I realized I was a consultant, and that would probably be the wrong signal to send, but it would be truthful. Anyway, um, let, I, I'm not going to deal with lots of, lots of technologies here. That is, I think, Dr. Berenstein will have more to say about than I will. Um, but I will be talking an awful lot about the digitally connected enterprise and how do you get there. Um, so right in on the title slide, this is the most single most important set of takeaways for you. Um, change management is at the heart of transformation. You, I, we've run into CEOs and corporate leaders across the state and in and, and other events I've spoken at. And they are looking at the movement to IoT, did, I, I, did, uh, oh, you, well, let me go and go on, whether it's, whether it's IoT, and I like to say that that's one letter removed from the word idiot, uh, as well as Industry 4.0. It seems like an overwhelming challenge. Uh, it involves uh, the entire enterprise. Well, it does involve the entire enterprise, but uh, this isn't a massive engineering undertaking. It's a change management exercise. And it really is, my talk is directed at the C-suite, senior engineers, and say, how do we start moving on the road? Second thing, which is really important, is that this is going to be a journey uh, because what we're at is at the edge of another industrial revolution. Uh, and it is really is about the linking of digital operations technologies to the entire digital enterprise. And that isn't going to be done in one fell swoop unless you build a, a greenfield plant. So if you want to see great greenfield plant, uh, you could go to Trump up in um, up in Illinois, where their, where their um, demonstration plant is. Pepsi's got a fabulous bottling plant down there in Orlando, uh, and you'll see what a greenfield plant looks at. But no one, most people aren't going to write off their sunk capital. So the second line on the front page is moving to digital operations technologies is a series of automation projects set within ex an ex executable strategic vision. We're seeing one automation pro projects, what they end up doing is they're making usually a bad OT layout quicker. Uh, and so what you need is a strategic vision so you can move it along. Next slide, please, Emma. Okay, so this is the, these are, I'm gonna do two, two slides of takeaways for you. I'm, I'm giving you the conclusions up front so you can fall asleep for the back end. So this is what you need to know about digital manufacturing, industry 4.0, the internet of things. First, all those words mean the same thing, which means they're vacuous, empty, confused titles. Uh, but it is the goal of getting the digitally connected enterprise with digitally integrated operations technologies is the endpoint of industry 4.0 in the industrial internet of things you need to realize the digital journey is not manuf is not engineering it's change management so our tactics to get there is a step-by-step -step journey that results in digital lean manufacturing and you get to connect the enterprise from everything from your supply chain to the front office by turning automation projects into a competitive strategy 
Now, there's some panic out there. And we, I, I did 50 interviews with CEOs last year. One of the middle of the interview said, I don't know what you mean by Industry 4.0 going away. Um, the, the reality is you're not behind at this point. And that's because the journey's just started. And I'll show you some data as to where, where firms have benchmarked themselves and where they think they are. The other thing is the language around Industry 4.0 is intentionally confusing by the companies that want to sell you stuff because they say they've got the solution and they want to sell you the solution. Well, if you're turning over your capital budget to your, to your vendor, good luck. What you really need to do is to is to realize that understand that understand not the technologies, not the solutions, but understand your problem. And then you find the right solution to meet that problem and you sequence them the right way so that as you end up with a series of 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 automation projects, you end up with transforming the company. Now, you're either going to do it yourself for competitive purposes or your customer is going to drag you there. If you're dealing with the, with the U.S. military, or the Defense Department, they're going to drag you to large parts of, of IoT and Industry 4.0 because they need tra traceability. They need to be able to, uh, to uh, guarantee the quality of the parts and the quality of your supply chains. They are absolutely requiring cybersecurity in the, in, in, at the beginning of your portals. And as you get those machines with... Uh, with sophisticated PLCs on the shop floor, cybersecurity around those. But realize that the journey is just beginning. So, but the risk is if you don't start taking that journey, you're going to join the industrial digital divide, the haves and the have nots, and you're going to lose control over your capital investments. And you'll notice that I can't spell either your or capital when you add the second slide late at night. So, Emma. Move it forward so I get over that embarrassment and I have to remember to fix slide two. Okay. So if you think about our observations and recommendations for you, first, digital transformation is primarily management and a leadership problem. It's not a pure technical problem. I have repeated this. Guess what? I think it's uh, managerial and confusion and uncertainty are frequently driven by the nomenclature. So the deeper the uh, an acronyms, the deeper the, the tech talk, uh, the more you should hold on to your wallet and sit down and make certain you, you approach this in a disciplined way. Number three, strategic clarity is helped by building a digital thread that connects your ERP systems, your sales and fulfillment systems, and operations technology, realizing that your IT and your IT gurus, are that's the land of ERP and sales and fulfillment because that's where you want real slow change in your systems. But what mechanical engineers, electrical engineers do in the back of your shop with OT is they're kludging solutions and they're dealing with bits of uh, with 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 bits, sometimes terabits of data coming off those machines. And you have to figure out how you harness them and link them to the other parts of the digital through a digital thread. Uh, motivation and prioritization. Again, it's fairly simple. What you have to do is build a business case and make these investments. Um, often people say it's re it's it's a uh, rate of return or profitability. Well, as we've been talking to companies, we've been finding two other motivations that are really important. One is the existential threat. If you don't start moving down these uh, down these roads, you're gonna you may end up losing your customers. If you are in aerospace, military, food. Automotive, uh, automotive OEM supply chain, aircraft supply chain, uh, this, this, these types of, uh, of, of uh, investments are going to be required by your customer. Uh, but we also said, not only is it cost savings and revenue producing, not only is it that existential threat, we found that some of the greatest motivations for putting in um, automation projects is resolving major pain points, managerial pain points. My, my favorite example is a spice company that we talked to. Um, the most dangerous job in their plant was actually tying the instructions onto the spice sack. It turned out that they had carpal tunnel problems coming out the ears. Their medical uh, experience, rates, experience was shooting up. Uh, and it wasn't rate of return as they had to get rid of that pain point because HR was having difficulty staffing it. 
So we actually think you should pay attention to pain points. Where in your OT, where in your back shop, are you getting your largest management problems that may not be directly uh, uh, show up in, in, a, in a net present value calculation? Next slide, please. Good. Uh, so what are the four barriers that we'll be seeing, particularly with small to mid-sized manufacturing enterprises? They're there. Uh, the first thing is the lack of open standards to connect the data backbones. That is a barrier. Uh, what we're seeing is that there are a number of vendors that want to provide that data backbone. Uh, they essentially are going to set the standards. The problem that we've seen companies have in adapting that is they're afraid that data backbone is going to start acting like, when, remember when ERP systems, the vendors uh, basically behave like pigs at, at a very full trough? Uh, we're afraid some of that may be going on, and they're afraid that if they're not open standard and you are held captive by the data backbone of one particular vendor, uh, they're going to be taking a, a lot of your profit and also hurting your flexibility. Uh, we need engineering solutions there. Two, uh, the hurdle rates for system in integrators. If you're putting in um, uh, digital uh, OT and that you uh, and you want to bring in a, a a a systems integrating company to handle this with you particularly if you've got eight languages going on the shop floor you've got four different uh, uh errors of plcs uh what we find is the system integrators have a hurdle rate of projects of about a quarter million to a half million dollars before they look at you uh and that creates a a, a, a barrier to entry for the small to mid-sized enterprises uh, conflict of interest. I do a lot of work with the manufacturing extension partnerships across the country. I used to be on the uh, uh, chair, their board of advisors, um, and we're seeing the MEPs moving into that space, helping the small to mid-sized companies to attack digital integration with in an affordable way. Uh, third thing that we, that has happened uh, is that every automation project is now a cybersecurity project, and there's cost and risk to that makes it more difficult, um, and you have to recognize that up front. Um, and fourth, there is a lack of low-cost data, data selection, analytics, and visualization. Again, some of the MEPs are starting to look at generic uh, dashboards to kind of figure out what type of data stream you need that's coming off of your, your equipment in OT and how you incorporate it across your IT platform. So those are the four big barriers. Uh, we're holding that out to the uh, to um, uh, the federal government saying these are things to attack. And again, MEP is part of NIST, and they hear this from me on a regular basis. Next slide, please, Emma. So let's talk about digital reality. Okay, click it again. So digital reality, this, these, these data come from our, our research partners, the MPI group in Shaker Heights, Ohio, is the only company that have done their fifth uh, survey on the Industry 4.0. Uh, this comes from the executive summary, which you can download free off the net. If you want the detail, you got to pay them some money. So I got the free stuff sitting up here. Uh, so in and, 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 uh, the, the, their slides, I take them out of order because I, 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 I like it my way better. So anyway, um, so what are the significant benefits that you get from investing in um, in digital manufacturing. The most important is improved quality, uh, improve increased production capacity, reduced operations cost, and also a lot of intelligence about your, your, uh, your, uh, your machinery and essentially uh, improving uh, the uptime on your lines. You can go through all of this if you want, if, if you want in more detail. Emma, next slide, please. So uh, the most relevant uh, Industry 4.0 use cases are factory asset intelligence, performance management, that's monitoring your machinery, quality sensing and detection. Um, I was with a hand plane manufacturer um, a year or so ago. He, the problem he had, he made, makes gorgeous, this is Lee Nielsen for the woodworking nuts out there, uh, makes gorgeous bronze hand planes. His largest problem from his vendors is bubbles inside the casting and quality sensing detection is important. Oh, Collabor yeah. Electronic yeah. engineering yeah. collaboration, yeah. digital pins. Excuse me? All right, I'm going ahead. Uh, engineering collaboration and digital twins. Again, you can go through the list. 
I have this here because people most often say, well, what can we do? Here are the use cases. Uh, the technologies that are most likely considered, number one, 61% is factory automation, but it's not automating the entire factory floor. It's project that the savings pay for the next project, savings pay for the next project. So it is an ongoing cascade of projects that end up revolutionizing your, your floor. Um, artificial intelligence, AI is there. Uh, and we go on through. So again, um, because we've we've got limited time, I'm going to leave this for your homework. Uh, slide eight, please, Emma. So uh, what is the return? These are just colossal numbers. These companies were just started their journey. The, the numbers on the left hand side is the one year rate of return. There's a little bit of guesstimate in it. Uh, they're talking about what's the return in terms of produ uh, production uh, uh, and productivity. Uh, the sl slide on the right side is the expected five-year rate of return. Uh, this is unbelievable. 19, uh, let me go, yes, there was a 19% increase in productivity. Uh, not, I'm sorry, 19% of the company's surveys said they had more than a 10% increase in productivity from the investments they made in year one. This didn't appear in any of the previous surveys. Uh, profitability, 21%. So they had a 10% increase in rate of return from that operation. Uh, if you go over the right five years from now, it's 47%. Well, almost half of all those responded said that they expect rate of return to be between 6 and 10%. That's where the digital divide is going to be. Um, and that's the, but what we're finding is that when, um, MPI surveyed uh, their companies, the surveys we've done with, with MPI, the Ohio Manufacturing Institute, what we're seeing is that they're getting these returns on $20,000 to $100,000 investments. These don't break the bank. Number nine, please. So uh, the steps they've taken, again, we frequently get, get as, as companies doing the digital transformation assessment, I'll talk about it at the end, they start saying, well, what are the action steps that we should be taking from those um, surveys? We're beginning to understand where those steps are, but these are the, these are the results that came out in the global survey that M MPI did. Um, and this was released in March of, uh, of 21. Um, and you'll see increased investment for security risk, cyber, they led the pack. Uh, integrated ITOT security, all that security stuff was right up front. But the challenges that take place deals with it, identifying opportunity and benefits, incorporating smart devices and embedded intelligence on there. So this will give you a bit of a, a menu when you do your homework and you can see where companies have been acting. Next slide, please. So what, what is digital uh, integrated digital operations technologies? They're digitally controlled integrated operations technologies uh, with also digital readouts on, on how the machining itself is working. Uh, in terms of production, it's digital integration with your supply chain through your manufacturing execution system. Uh, next lean is digital utilization, digital integration optimization. Right now, most of the companies that are that are implementing this are do, are, are uh, do have lean cultures. Not all. Uh, we're saying uh, implement lean while you're there. Put together as you're starting to do your automation projects. Uh, make certain that your 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 production your 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 uh, operations layout is lean. Um, and if you want to put in lean culture, maintain it. Do it as you're going along. But you don't have to be fully lean management at this point. Uh, but the most important thing is that we see the next step in lean is going to be doing all the things with processes that we map now with humans on lean, but it's also going to be now leaning out your machines and the way in which they integrate. That next lean is going to be digital lean. Um, we see digital integration, uh, digital integration and traceability with the MES being a large part of uh, the way you interact with your supply chain and your output. So trace, so, so that we're seeing projects there. Uh, the digital enterprise is the downstream production, is the integration of your ERP, your MES, and your operations technology. Right now, ERP and MES, that is the, 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 um, the domain of your information technology boys and girls. 
uh, pardon me, I, I had a brain fart by saying that, your MES staff, uh, your IT staff, OT is very much for those folks on the production line shop floor. There still is a culture clash. The good thing we see about using the digital transformation assessment with your management team is we've seen those barriers between IT and OT break down. Uh, the real challenge is if your OT is done by your engineers on the top floor and your IT is outsourced, you got to deal with that. Uh, the other part of the digital enterprise is upstream facing the customer. Uh, that integrates your, your ERP with the consumer Internet of Things or the, or the industrial Internet of Things. I see the Internet of Things much more of a, as a fulfillment and customer intelligence functions. That is, again, the, one of the three parts you, you, you invest in. ERP, Internet of Things, sales and fulfillment and intelligent function, and operations technology on your shop floor. Next slide, please. So let's what's digital manufacturing? Guess what, Emma? Next slide, please. So uh, this is the way that the OMI folks put it together. We had our friends in, in Ohio State Engineering work with us. Um, so what we see is that, the, again, digital projects are, are driven around a strategic, a strategic digital integrated core. And these are the projects. Everything that you see in red is digital and cyber. Um, and it, well, this is an exhaustive list. It's a pretty damn good list. Uh, the things in gray, uh, our uh, operations on the shop floor, uh, and those part, those in black are after product. Those really are the main domains in which digital takes place. Yes, you said, you'll notice I said red, gray, and black. I'm trying to be nice. We know that color is truly scarlet, followed by gray, and uh, black is the, is the offsetting, uh, is the um, alternate uniform of the football team. All right, next slide, please. So, the, the digital OT benefits, what we've been seeing, this came of our work before we started doing survey work with, with uh, MPI group. Uh, you'll notice on the right, the schematic is our focus on the enterprise ERT, our ERP, the factory firewall, the factory servers, and that the OT uh, component, that's the digital factory. This is an easy, this is schematic we had. The supply chain is goes through your MES, the customers, the IIoT. Uh, but the, the benefits, safety. Uh, digital machines are a hell of a lot safer than than um, um, uh, mechan than, than, than um, older mechanical machines. Predictive downtime analytics, keeping the, the shop going, anticipating a machine break. Increases in quality, along with the fact that of what you could do with 3D printing and other new technologies to lower your part count. Part and product tracing, hugely important. Uh, and this is where, 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 where the gold is. It's how, do you, how can you shrink your batch size so you can, so you can actually do mass customization? Uh, we've been talking to plants that are they're doing multi-plant integration, taking advantage of such things as cheaper electricity costs across different plants. More importantly, taking old fixed costs like, um, like, like electricity and energy and at being able to add it to the build of materials. Uh, it's the gateway to next plane and productivity and huge improvements in customer service uh, because you could actually find out where the problem is. And, and we've got stories on this, but we don't have time for stories. Next slide, please. So the threats, talked about it, culture clash between IT and OT, threat number one, that is a change management issue. How do you overcome that issue? It's building teams uh, and making certain they've got the same, um, uh, same goal in mind, and, and that is where uh, we've seen magic happen as we've seen teams take the DTMA, that's the digital transformation for manufacturing assessment. Uh, investment risk and, uh, and legacy machines. The investment risk is there's rapid model, uh, uh, model, model um, uh, it, uh, growth changeover taking place among new digital machines. Take a look at the rapid innovation of things like 3D printing. Uh, and and um, so if I buy this new machine, what's my investment risk that that's a barrier uh the other barrier is i've got millions of dollars of legacy capital on the shop floor i'm not going to throw that away how do i integrate those plcs and what should go what should stay uh fear of value capture by vendors uh if if um, i outsource a lot of the intelligence the installation um as well as the data coming off the machine going back to the vendor of the machine 
Um, am I losing a potential profit area? Uh, the challenge of implementation, it's overwhelming and I can't get a system integrator. Uh, here's the thing we found. Some people have done some automation. They put in a new machine, a new machine online. It turns out there's latent intelligence in that machine and they never hook it up to anything. Um, call your MEP. Uh, moving from project to strategy um, is not the way to work. What you should be doing is moving from strategy to project. Uh, and that is the, that's the reason why this becomes, we see the movement to a digital transformation strategy being part of your cap, your capital budgeting. Um, and how, who monetizes the uh, analytics and the selling tools, who has the bargaining power. If you're vending, um, if, for, if you're vending to a big OEM, are they going to be saying you have to provide us all that data and you can't charge them for it? That, that's possible. Uh, we see that as a barrier. Next slide, please. Let's uh, see, 10 slides. I can do this by in 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Um, for most goals and companies, it's not to do a greenfield plant, even though the goal of every salesperson is to sell you a new greenfield plant. Say no, two hands on your wallet, sit, and then say, I have to go through my capital budgeting process. What you want to do is aim for success. You want to accommodate the old tools that work. You then integrate those new tools, and then you migrate the, inter the integrated production process to a digital OT environment. Um, with, there's, there's a, there are companies that, that for which craft is st still part of what they do. Uh, that craft is going to be there. So how do you automate around them and improve that, that, that productivity? That's the, that's, that's the challenge. We want to turn automation projects into incremental executions of digital strategy. If you have no digital strategy, you'll just have automation projects. The result will become a digital execution. Yeah, how do you eat an elephant? Moving to digital OT is a series of digital automation strat projects within that strategic vision. You know the answer. You eat the elephant one bite at a time. You just hope you pick the right end to start to work on. That's strategy. First bite. Next, next slide, please. Next slide. Let's talk briefly about the manufacturing workforce. So what we we've seen in our work that there are there are five approximately manufacturing workforce challenges out there, um, and and um, our team at OMI has been working to address them with it within Ohio State. Uh, but it's it's it the, the, what most manufacturers are screaming for right now uh, are semi skilled production workers, machine tenders. That's an itch. It's got to be scratched. But that's not a long term solution. Uh, what you have to do is figure out how you take those semi-skilled production workers and start turning them into the workforce of the future. Uh, there continues to be uh, uh, great shortages in skilled machinists, the traditional skilled manufacturing oper operations, everything from welding to tool and die uh, to now to um, uh, mach traditional machining. Uh, we, we haven't trained machinists since 1979. Um, and so part of what's going on is those programs understanding that you'll always need skilled machinists in your in your shop floor but that will involve robotics and as well as is digitally integrated subtractive manufacturing as well as additive manufacturing uh but it's going to be a smaller part of your workforce my expectation is manufacturing workforce is going to shrink but it's going to upskill um it, the immediate and looming problems industrial maintenance technicians i used to think that was the person who cleaned the toilets no that's the one that keeps the uh, the uh, the um uh, factory line going. Germans call it mechatronics. This is technical education with industry certification and, and work experience. You could think of somebody with what, a Cisco uh, uh, certificate, a Yakisawa certificate, a Fanuc certificate, uh, but those maintenance technicians tend to be trained on, on, on a specific part of one or several machines. Uh, they're very expensive. Uh, they're $80,000 to $120,000 a year, sometimes more. Uh, and that is coming out of community colleges, very good vocational schools. Uh, these are smart people who can connect their heads and their hands. Uh, and they, their, their weak port may, their weak part may be cybersecurity and um, uh, computer programming. The true missing uh, skill is engineering technologists. These are a different type of engineer. I'm going to talk about that a bit. Uh, this is what we've started with our bachelor of science in engineering technology programs. 
MSU branches. We know uh, Purdue is going down this road. Penn State, Penn College, they're doing a nice job on, on doing this. But the engineering technologist is a major change in the engineer, and I've got three minutes left, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and uh, we're also finding um, we aren't generating manufacturing leaders, um, and a lot of that is, is they they aren't coming up from from the engineering ranks. Next next slide, please. So that uh, and <clears throat> that new engineer we're after. We've been training research engineers. The reason why we've been training really good in research engineers is engineering programs lose money on tuition. They make their money on overhead. So it's essentially research that's driving the education of the engineer. We're getting very competent, narrowly trained, deep engineers. What manufacturing is asking for, what industry is asking for, is a manufacturing engineering generalist that understand process and uh, that understand process engineering they can translate complex processes processes and things that can be programmed on and across machines uh, they need to be trained in in integrating production supply chain and logistics that's the old industrial engineer and we shut down those departments they need to be able to read write speak lead they need to be trained as servant leaders um, and they need analytical problem solving skills, which engineers are good at, but they need to be generalists that go, that can combine digital, computational, cyber, cyber security, mechanical, electrical, metals, and materials. That's a generalist. And if you're going to talk about engineering technologists, it's going to essentially bridge across your entire OT spectrum. That's what we're looking for. And this revolves around integrating analog equipment with digital operations. That is the missing piece. The federal government has got to work with, with the university community to figure out how we can afford to train them. I know that in our in our regional campuses, we're losing an, every single kid. The other huge part of this is experience, experience engineering is part and, part and parcel. It's everything with us. Next slide, please. So let's talk, quickly talk about the digital transformation. Um, uh, assessment, uh, and I'll say next slide a lot because I'm down to my final minute uh, frequently. Um, what the DTMA is, it is, it's an assessment. This is not a questionnaire. This is a tool for you to change your business. Um, and, and what with the assessment areas are your overall business strategy? This is on the left-hand side, production, warehousing, distribution, supply chain, logistics, customer facing support functions and smart products. This, uh, this this is an, a diagnostic that asks you where you are uh, moving digitally in each of those areas. The outcomes of this is we want you to assess the level of digital maturity by using the tool. Uh, this manages change and it links to your capital budget and it gets your team to figure out what are the projects you're gonna work on. It builds company-wide understanding and buy-in. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, this PowerPoint will be given to everybody, will be available to everybody. Um, and uh, you need to invest to improve performance. So uh, let's go to the next slide because I'm running very late. Uh, so just notions is this is only good for the for the for the big guys. Well, we have now done 71 uh, unique assessments with teams. 64 in Ohio, this is a, a grant into Ohio, the Ohio MEP, but we're now doing it across the country. There are four in Tennessee, two in Minnesota, two in New York, and your, the local MEPs can facilitate and do this with you. We can help you by Zoom, uh, but it's being done. Uh, oh, it's only the big company, big Fortune 1000 companies. No, 75% of the, of the companies taking this are privately held, family owned, closely held enterprises, they're SMMEs. Next slide, please, because I don't have time to walk through this. Um, what type of manufacturers are there? Everything, 65% are small batch and queue, 49% uh, are discrete manufacturing. We've every, everything from continuous process to flow to batch, and it's been working with all of them. Next slide, please. Um, so which stakeholders are on the team? We don't want just the CEO, the COO, or the or the chief manufacturing officer filling this out. This is best done in team because this builds the, the tool that allows you to execute um, change management. We'll work with what we got. 
but work with your MEP ahead of time to figure out what that team looks like. Next, next slide, please. Um, is everybody way ahead of me? So this is all on a, on a, a Likert scale of, of zero to five. Well, Likert and Z, zero is one to five is Likert, zero is we're doing bupkis, nothing. Um, and what you'll find is on the left-hand side, these are the scores um, across um, each of the areas. The uh, average score across the entire assessment is 1.49. That's just starting. Uh, this, and these are the scores as we've been going around each month as we've been in the field with this since January. Um, overall business scores are higher than they are actually in, um, in, in warehousing, supply chain, logistics. Oh, and by the way, smart products, smart products doing very poorly. Uh, next slide. Oh, means there's room to improve. Practice doesn't, doesn't lead to perfect, makes to better. Ah, last such a slide. The fast lane is the uh, MEP down in the Dayton area. They're part of the University of Dayton Research Institute. Uh, Mary Miller is the person you want to talk to at the end of this pr presentation. I have her contact information. This is the process that Fastlane uses, which is the process most of the MEPs are used. We start with education as needing up front to make this a successful en uh, uh, engagement. Um, about two and a half, these, these conversations with the team and filling out the, the DTMA as a team takes between two and a half hours. Some have gone as long as four uh, because uh, oh, it's a, valid, a voyage of discovery. Um, the MEP comes back that day and gives you your, your findings within an hour with benchmarks, because we can benchmark with others who are in the database without revealing your data, it's completely confidential. And then the important part is then what do we do next, uh, which is uh, fill, filling out a spreadsheet with your team on potential automation projects, estimating by existential threat, pain point, and rate of return. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the MEPs in Ohio, they're listed. Next slide, please. Contact information. I, I, Mary Miller gave me everything and the others. I gave you the over the transom stuff. If you need to be connected, you can, you can contact me. I'll get you connected uh, or, or, uh, or call into each of these. I know like in Magnet, it's Mike O'Donnell's the guy you call. <clears throat> they, they, are, they cover the Northeastern part of the state. Um, next slide, please. I'm exhausted and I've eaten into Daryl's time. I apologize. And thank no, you for okay. your patience. Yeah, thank thank you very much. Mark, I turn it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.